So I 3D print the past. And some people ask me, why do you do that? Why do you 3D print the past? I do that because I want to tell stories and I want to help people tell their own stories, even people who aren't with us anymore. So yesterday I 3D printed this brick. Um, it doesn't really look like much. It's, it's orange right now. It'll eventually be red. But it has the impressions of three fingers. And these are three fingers from the enslaved person who made this brick for George Mason. And the thing about 3D printing is that anybody can 3D print. If you, if you have your own 3D printer, if you want to print the past, you can do it. You can go to your library, you can go to your local school, and you can print aspects of the past. You can print a tooth from an ancient elephant that used to walk across North America. It's been extinct for 10,000 years. You can print a slave shackle from somebody who was brought over from Africa to Virginia to labor in the fields. You can actually, if you want to interact with archaeology in another country, another part of the world, if you want to 3D print a figurine from 2,000 years ago from North India, from literally the rooftop of the world, you can do that. 3D printers uh, come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Uh, the most common kind, the kind that I use, basically takes strands of plastic and melts it and lays it down layer by layer by layer. And it places those layers using a computer file. And those computer files are online, so anybody can access them. Um, I run the Virtual Creation Laboratory at Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh, we do a 3D scanning in a number of different ways. We've been doing this for six years now. Uh, we primarily use lasers. Uh, to capture objects, um, and we've recorded thousands of objects from all over the country from different parts of the world. And we're doing this to help protect and preserve these artifacts against time and against nature. And we're doing it so that people sitting here can have access to these objects, can tell their own stories using them. Uh, since I began this project, uh, 3D scanning, I've been working with my students and it's been a great way for them to learn cutting edge technology, to get experience, but also to help other people tell stories because that's what we're really all about. We've scanned all over the place. We've scanned throughout Richmond, for those of you who are from Richmond. Um, I've scanned the arch at Tredegar. I've even scanned a World War II veteran. The real one's bigger. <laughs> he is now 97 years old. He just had a birthday. And during World War II, his plane was shot down over Italy. And he had to break out of the back of the airplane and sit on the tail of the plane. And then he parachuted from there, and he landed, and he broke his back. But he survived. And if you go to the Virginia War Memorial, you can see him sitting on the back of his airplane. You can see the bottom of his feet. Or if you go on Wednesdays, he's there. So you can see the real veteran. And he has in his pocket a little version of himself. One of the things about the 3D printing, you'll see like with my brick, it's bright orange. Um, luckily, I have very talented students who work to make them look real. So if you're looking at them from a few feet away, you can't tell that it's not a real object. It's very helpful if you can look at the real thing when you're painting it, but sometimes we actually use the computer files that we've created to paint replicas. The great thing about having 3D printed objects is we can share them anywhere. People can come up to an archaeological site and the archaeologist can't hand you the real thing. It's dangerous. You can drop it or break it or even touching an object. The chemistry in your fingers can damage that object. The 3D printed replica, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about somebody dropping it or breaking it or getting it sticky. And you know, you can share everything with people with 3D printing. And it's a great way to teach. So I work with a lot of teachers who want to talk about the past, who want to talk about history, who want to talk about science. And they can go beyond just a static two-dimensional image on a page. They can go beyond text by sharing these 3D printed objects. I use them for my own teaching. Students learn a lot more when they can see a three-dimensional object 
than looking at a page when they're trying to identify what an object is. It helps them when they go and do archaeology. A lot of museums are turning to 3D printing. If you go to a museum and you see objects that are behind glass, you can't touch them. Museums have a lot of signs that say, do not touch. But museums are taking 3D printing and putting objects on walls, and you can touch them, and you can feel them, and you can interact with them. The, the real thing is still there. It's still behind glass. But you can get a sense for the object itself. You can take objects from all over the world and create an exhibit. You can create your own exhibit if you want, if you have access to a 3D printer. And it's really important for people who can't touch if you go to a museum. If there's no, if there's no ability to touch in a museum, what do you have? Uh, so we've been working with a number of museums that want to reach out to the visually impaired. And so if you go to a museum and there's a glass case, you could see it maybe, but a visually impaired person is going to have nothing. And so 3D printing gives them something they can touch, something they can feel. 3D printing is really going to revolutionize the way we think about the past, the way we tell stories, the way we teach generations from, uh, from here on about what has come before them. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>